Imagine empty space. Total vacuum, no air, no particles, no light, nothing. But in the quantum world, this nothing isn't empty at all. It's a chaotic, roiling sea of quantum fluctuations, particles popping in and out of existence, fields jittering unpredictably, and energy briefly surfacing before vanishing again. This is what physicists call the quantum vacuum, and it's as far from boring as you can get. Some have dreamed of harnessing this so-called vacuum energy to power future starship engines, to drive warp fields, or to bend space and time. It's a tantalizing idea, and while it turns out you can't just siphon energy from the vacuum like gas from a tank, the truth is even weirder. It's actually possible within the laws of physics to move energy through this quantum vacuum without it ever physically traveling through space. It's a process called quantum energy teleportation QET. QET isn't science fiction. It's not a Star Trek-style transporter beam, but it might be the closest thing we ever get. While we can't break the universe's fundamental rules like the impossibility of faster-than-light communication or the conservation of energy, we can bend them. We can, it seems, find loopholes. And QET is one of them. Let's dive into how it works. To understand QET, we need to review some quantum basics. That means visiting two of physics' favorite hypothetical friends, Alice and Bob, the quantum entanglement primer. In Bob's lab, he prepares a pair of entangled qubits labeled A and B. These are particles whose quantum states are deeply linked. This specific kind of entangled state is known as a bell pair. In these, the spin of each qubit up or down is not defined independently. Instead, their states are in superposition, both are simultaneously up and down, but if one is measured, the other's state becomes instantly known. Alice takes qubit A to her lab. When she measures its spin and finds it to be up, qubit B, still with Bob, must instantly become down. The wave function collapses and the entangled state is resolved. Now, Alice can call Bob and tell him the result of her measurement. When he checks his qubit, he'll see the opposite result. This entanglement doesn't let them communicate faster than light. While it seems like the state of one qubit instantly affects the other, any useful information transfer still depends on classical communication, which is limited by the speed of light. But it's still pretty weird, spooky action at a distance, as Einstein famously complained. It gets even spookier. Alice can choose to measure her qubit along a different axis, say left-right instead of up-down, and Bob's measurement will still correlate, though in a more complex way. This non-local correlation forms the basis of Bell tests, which have repeatedly confirmed that quantum entanglement is real and that reality is stranger than classical physics ever predicted. From information to teleportation, so far we've talked about measuring entangled particles. But it gets more interesting. Alice could also use her qubit to interact with a third, new qubit a qubit with a completely independent quantum state. Through a carefully designed interaction, she can transfer the state of that new qubit to Bob's qubit, even though it's far away. This is called quantum teleportation, and while it doesn't teleport matter, it does teleport information a qubit's full quantum state. This has been achieved in real experiments over distances as long as hundreds of kilometers and even between satellites and Earth. Quantum teleportation is already shaping the future of quantum computing and communication networks. But if information can be moved this way, can energy. The thought experiment expands. Let's go back to Alice and Bob. Suppose now they share not one but ten bell pairs and tangled qubits. The twist this time is that these qubits are suspended in a magnetic field, which causes the spin-up state to be slightly lower in energy than the spin-down state. When Bob measures a qubit, he either has to add energy to it if it's in the low energy state, or he can extract energy from it if it's in the high energy state. But because the spin is random, if he measures all 10 qubits, he gains and loses energy equally. Net gain, zero. But what if Alice goes first? She measures all 10 qubits and sends Bob a message telling him which ones are in the high energy state. Now, Bob can choose to measure only the qubits where he can extract energy. 
Voila Bob gains energy. From where? It looks like energy has been teleported from Alice to Bob. Importantly, Alice had to spend energy to make those measurements. So, the laws of energy conservation aren't broken. But this little trick sure makes it look like energy jumped across space, guided only by entanglement and a classical message. Enter the quantum vacuum. Now here's where things really take a turn. Instead of preparing entangled pairs manually, what if we use the quantum vacuum itself? In quantum field theory, the vacuum isn't empty, it's the lowest energy state of the quantum fields that permeate all of space. Due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, even the vacuum fluctuates. It's like a perfectly still pond covered in invisible ripples that momentarily rise and fall. These fluctuations appear random if you measure one location, but when you measure to different locations, you find that they're correlated. This means that the vacuum at one point in space is quantum entangled with the vacuum at every other point. This pre-existing entanglement in the vacuum forms the basis for a new possibility, teleporting energy without ever preparing qubits or transferring particles. All Alice and Bob need is to measure carefully chosen regions of space. The QET protocol. In 2008, physicist Masahiro Hata proposed the protocol of quantum energy teleportation using this very concept. Here's how it works. Alice makes a measurement on the vacuum at her location. This measurement injects a small amount of energy into the vacuum. She disturbs the delicate balance of the vacuum's field modes, which were previously canceling out. That disturbance propagates through the vacuum's entangled structure, though no real particle travels. Bob, armed with information about Alice's measurement sent via a classical signal, can perform a complementary operation on the vacuum in his region. That allows him to extract a small amount of real energy without any physical connection between them. No energy was sent through space. No particles traveled. And yet, energy was added in one place and extracted in another. That's why it's called teleportation. But, and this is key, Bob cannot extract more energy than Alice injected. The vacuum's books are always balanced. Energy conservation holds. So does relativity because the classical message still travels at light speed or slower. But the appearance of energy transfer without travel is, nevertheless, mind-blowing. A Maxwell's demon for the quantum vacuum. This process might remind you of Maxwell's demon a thought experiment from classical thermodynamics. In that setup, a demon selectively opens a door between two chambers of gas, letting fast particles go one way and slow ones go the other. Over time, one side heats up and the other cools down, allowing energy extraction from a uniform system. At first glance, this seems to violate the second law of thermodynamics. But it doesn't because the demon has to gather and process information, which costs energy. Likewise, Alice in QET spends energy to gather the information that allows Bob to extract energy elsewhere. What makes QET so exciting is that the quantum vacuum acts like the gas in Maxwell's demon, and we through measurements can be the demon. Lab Reality QET Experiments All this might sound like pure theory. But in 2022, researchers at the Institute for Quantum Computing IQC in Waterloo, Canada, pulled it off. They used entangled qubits made from the quantum spin states of carbon atoms in transcrotonic acid, a molecule you'd usually find in glues and paints. Using nuclear magnetic resonance, they stabilized these qubits and used them as analogs of the quantum vacuum. Then, a third qubit mediated a measurement process. With the right protocol, energy was injected into one qubit and extracted from its partner despite the second qubit being in its ground state, seemingly without energy to give. This showed, experimentally, that quantum energy teleportation is possible, at least in simple systems. A follow-up experiment in 2023 using IBM's superconducting quantum computer confirmed the result. Why it matters? Now, the amount of energy transferred is tiny so small it's not useful for powering anything today. 
and the QET protocol via the actual quantum vacuum hasn't yet been demonstrated. But these early results suggest it might be within reach. And even if we can't harvest vacuum energy to power starships, there are still deep implications. For one, QET might help us better understand the quantum vacuum and how entanglement is woven through spacetime. It could also offer insights into exotic physics. C. The QET process creates regions of negative energy density, something we also see in the Casimir effect, where two closely placed metal plates exclude certain quantum modes, lowering the vacuum energy between them. Negative energy density is what general relativity says you need to stabilize a wormhole or power a warp drive. While QET doesn't offer a practical path to such feats, at least not now, it does show that negative energy can be generated remotely without exotic matter or massive engineering. That alone is a profound tool for theoretical physics. The bottom line, so, can we teleport energy? Yes, within limits. We can't get more energy out than we put in. We can't break the speed of light. But QED shows us that energy doesn't always have to move the way we think it does. Instead of particles flying through space, we can use the deep structure of entanglement to steer energy between distant points as long as we pay the cost and obey the rules. The universe may not let us cheat its laws, but it seems willing to let us exploit its quirks. And in that, there's real magic.